policies uh, on the national level, particularly as they affect uh, federal state relations, is, is a very strong focus. I'm on the labor. Very grateful, and not just the three of us here, but uh, everybody back home as well. Um, I'm primarily here for at least uh, three reasons. One, my role as a legislator is certainly to represent the folks back home. And, and I view my role uh, as a, a representative, not just of the people in my district, but, but of the state of Maine. Uh, secondly, as a legislator, my role is to uh, provide for the public health and safety. And water uh, and Maine are um, just two things that I can't imagine being separated. The people of the Kennebunkport Wells Water District uh, asked me to attend a meeting several weeks ago. And they explained to me that their water district was engaging in a contract with a multinational corporation. And they wanted to know if the district had the authority to do that. Um, clearly, the district was established by state legislature, uh, state legislative action, um, many decades ago. And, and their charter specifically states that their charge is to secure and protect water for a clearly defined geographical area. It doesn't say anything at all about extracting water for the multinational corporate interest in the global marketplace. So, so that's question number one. Do they have the authority to do that? Um, and the, the other issue is, while, while this multinational corporation has to its, uh, at its disposal um, the science that, that might be able to ter determine uh, uh, geological and hydrological uh, consequences of extracting water to this degree, um, we're not confident that the water district, again, had, even has the authority to do this, but, but also do they have at their disposal the resources to determine the long-term consequences of such an extraction. Um, the, the other concern is uh, if this were to go forward, and clearly you all know that the superintendent of the water district has indefinitely tabled the uh, proposed contract, which is a hopeful thing um, on, on for, the, for the people concerned about this, but, but they're also skeptical that a tabling motion um, really is nothing more than a tabling motion, and this may well come up again at some point during the winter when people might not be paying attention. Um, and so they want you to pay attention, they want me to pay attention um, on their behalf and make sure that this doesn't happen. Um, they're, they're, now I want to get to the trade uh, policy part of this, but they're, they're also asking that the Public Utilities Commission be involved in oversight. Clearly, the contract uh, proposed by Nestle's um, speaks to the Public Utilities Commission um, uh, in, a, in a way that, that, that keeps them out of the picture. And we need them to be in the picture. Uh, it, you know, water is key to life and to Maine. And, and it's important that the Public Utilities Commission oversee this. But, but the reason why we're here before you is, is that the people back home are concerned that if the water district were to engage in this contract, that, that the international trade laws would then um, uh, supersede our local and state control. And for that reason, we need the assurance that the state of Maine, that the Attorney General's office, uh, are going to stay on top of this closely and ensure that our water and that our rights are protected. Um, Vermont, you may know, has, has uh, adopted legislation that folds groundwater into the public trust. Um, I've read their legislation. It speaks to the value that the people of Vermont have for water. They understand it to be essential to life. They understand it to be essential to public safety and health and it must be protected not just for today, but for tomorrow, for posterity. And, and I urge um, you, if you haven't, to, to look at Vermont's. Uh, um, I think it's important legislation. I think we could adopt 
uh, some of, uh, especially the value. <clears throat> Water needs the protection of, protection of the public trust. A stay on decision, or if you could uh, ask for that, or somehow you could help us just in the short term, immediate concerns of that. Thank you, Laura. Down to us. Um, we are a consultative body that was um, organized by the legislature to weigh in on these very issues with our governor, our state legislature, our congressional delegation, and the United States Trade Representative, the person who has the authority to negotiate these agreements. We have a very good working relationship with the majority of those entities. Uh, we have the attention of the United States Trade Representative. So moving forward, what we have is a network. We know when the trade agreements are coming up. We know how to weigh in on them. And we conduct public hearings on a regular and ongoing basis for the purposes of talking to Maine people in Maine communities about the issues of trade with them. That having been said, there is an enormous amount of concern, as you have heard recently, save our groundwater in New Hampshire and the, the various interests in Vermont, as well as speaking in a broader region, upstate New York and other states are very concerned about these very extraction issues. And so the informal network that exists, particularly among the environmental groups and the land use groups, keeps us very well informed. Additionally, we have the resources of the Forum of on Democracy and Trade, which is a, a um, sponsored project of the Harrison Institute of the Georgetown um, University School of Law. And the reason that Georgetown is interested in it is because Georgetown <coughs> has a commitment to making sure that local, municipal, state, and county organizations and governments have the ability to weigh in on these national and international issues. So does the network exist? Yes. Are they aware of your issues? Yes. Are they keeping us informed on these issues? I would say resoundingly yes. Um, those of us who have any familiarity with, with Nestle or the other large corporations that, that are investing in the United States at these rates know that they have entire teams of people whose job it is to figure out how to get around the laws of any municipality, any county, and sometimes any state. And that's quite frankly how these trade agreements are crafted. Okay, so you're up against, you're the David up against the enormous Goliath, but I have to tell you, in public hearing after public hearing, the people of Maine, regardless of affiliation, regardless of which part of the state they come from, get how important the ability of the state to regulate its environment and to control the quality of its life is. And the people of the state of Maine, more importantly than anybody sitting around this table, are with you. Okay. But people, you know, if you could help people to start focusing on some of these longer term implications and the fact that once this contract is signed, um, you could be basically signing away your capacity in the future to regulate water um, in, in your area, and what does that mean? Um, and how does that balance against the promises of some of the jobs that, that you're, you know, that's being offered? So I think it's, you know, it's informing yourselves as fully as possible um, and informing the public, and um, we can supply you with as I said, with those resources, with those people in, in other states, uh, with the you know, folks at the Forum on Democracy and Trade, I think all of them would be very helpful to you and, and um, very eager to um, provide you with information.